Welcome back. You're still watching NTV Weekend Edition. And if you're just joining us, I am Sandra Twinobri. And our sign language interpreter tonight is uh, Susan Mujawa. Well, as we continue to reflect on the enthronement of Dr. Samuel Stephen Kazimba Mugalu as the new Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, we found it necessary to consider what the job will entail, especially the challenges involved in the work as head of the Anglican Church. And that is why in our studios tonight we have a priest of this church, and that is a Reverend, uh, Dr. Reverend uh, Grace Rovare, who is also a senior lecturer in teacher training at uh, Chambogo University. Welcome back to NTV. This is the second time we're having you in our studios. We're glad pleasure. to have you. It's my pleasure to be here. Yes. Mm. Most importantly, I want to start by asking you how long you have been in the ministry. Uh, I became a priest in 2008. Mm. So that's 12 years. 12 years. Mm. But I was a preacher before. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we... Uh, and my father is a priest. Okay. So anyway, tomorrow is going to be the enthronement of uh, the new Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, is mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. We would like to hear your thoughts on, on what you're looking forward to seeing. First and foremost, I congratulate him, uh, the right, right Reverend Dr. Kazimba. Tomorrow at about 12 o'clock, he will become the most reverend. Mm. So he's really the right reverend, he will be the most reverend. There is one archbishop at a time in a church, mm. so he will be the archbishop. So I congratulate him and uh, look forward to working him as our senior head. Mm. And uh, the church is huge, the Anglican church is huge in Uganda and outside Uganda. And uh, he has a lot of work to do. He has a lot of work. Talking about uh, having a lot of work to do, people watching us tonight and even myself would like to actually have you highlight one of the issues that I know the church faces, and that is the relationship they have with the government. What exactly should he do to maintain the balance? First and foremost, the job description of the archbishop is known, mm. and the position of the church and the state are also known. So his task is to ensure that he does his job well, and the, the church lives in a state. So he must, the church must work with the state in all matters lawful. Mm. There, are such, there are some sections of the public uh, that have on several occasions made a few comments saying that uh, the church should stay, you know, it should do its own part, which is, you know, serve religiously, not involve itself in political matters. At a point like that, if there's an issue in the country, what should our new Archbishop of the Church of Uganda put in place or consider in order to ensure that there is no, you know, bias in, in, the, in their day-to-day -day work? The Church has a duty to communicate the truth in society. Mm. Part of the work of a priest, of a bishop, of an archbishop is to communicate the truth. So when the government is in error, when there are wrong things, the church must come out, it's called a prophetic voice. Mm. So part of his work is to communicate to the state what is correct. And what is correct is only correct. Mm. And therefore the state has a duty to ensure order, security, provide services. And the church has to comment that the state is either doing them or not. It's part of his work. Mm. We are talking about organizing elections. The church has to say they must be lawful, legitimate, and organized well. Mm. Th that's part of his contribution. And uh, he must endeavor to make that contribution. Do you think from your own perspective there are challenges that he's going to encounter firsthand after entering office tomorrow? Yes, the church has 37 bishops, has uh, 11 million followers. Mm. There are many priests. There are many issues he has to handle. First and foremost, he has to preach the gospel. He has to, we are finishing. There are many church projects he has to handle. And the church at hand has, today in Uganda, we speak, the, the Council Republic of Uganda guarantees freedom of worship. And so people worship, uh, they have the right to worship as they so wish, mm. which I subscribe to. In the process, uh, when you have a right, you have a responsibility. Quite often people want to enjoy rights, but they don't want responsibilities. So he has a duty to communicate in Uganda, a pluralistic society, what is correct so that the followers and other Ugandans know the truth from time to time. Let us talk about, I don't know if you watched our story that we did this week about mm -hmm. uh, one of the pressing challenges that he's going to face once he enters office, and that mm -hmm. is the issue of women, concerns around them not being able to have 
the big positions within uh, the religious circles. What is your opinion on that? In the church, there are four ways we get the truth. The truth. Mm. First is the Bible. We make a reference to the scriptures. Okay. What does scriptures say? Second is apostolic tradition. Mm. What did the early bishops decide? The third is philosophy. We apply reason to any matter at hand. Mm. And the fourth is community experience. So, any matter that will arise, starting with one of women, we shall be subjected into those four areas. What does the Bible say? What does the apostolic tradi tradition say? What's the reason at hand? Mm. What is the community experience? So that will be applied according to that. When you say uh, all these different, uh, uh, you know, criteria that you follow to select uh, people that take up positions, uh, probably would ask from uh, the, the past few years, did a uh, majority of the women not uh, qualify according to the criteria you've used? I said the criteria is clear. The to, to qualify, there is no thing stopping them from qualifying, in my opinion. Mm. But to so become we, either a priest mm. or a bishop or an archbishop, they are procedures. Okay. Part of them we follow, one will be, what does the Bible say? What the apostolic tradition decide on these matters at hand? What's the reasoning and what's the community experience at hand? It's like you stand standing to be an MOP. So what does the, the Bible love say? You, the love of Uganda what, allows what you. What does the Bible say about uh, choosing uh, the different people for these uh, different The Bible uh, is clear. People can serve. Mm. It's very clear. So women have not been able to serve because we, ha we actually see a quite a, a few number of women in big positions in the church. There are true few, but I say the Bible is clear. They can serve. <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interesting, yeah. Dr. Grace. Yeah. Well, I'll also point out an issue that mm. people tend to talk about, and that is uh, young people sort of running away. So we, we are sort of seeing an unprecedented number of, of people running away from the church to other, you know, uh, breakaways. Mm. I, I, you know, let's just say people we want to use the word that they, it is bo bor or boring the other side. What is your opinion on that? And how can the new archbishop address it? That is a, uh, a serious matter, first and foremost. Do you believe it is true in the first place? Uh, it's true. The, 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 there are many churches in Uganda. Mm. So the, the point is I'm saying that it is not the first time. The church, when Jesus Christ left the church to Peter, who was the first priest and bishop, the church was one, in 900 AD, the church got split into Orthodox Church and Catholic Church. In 517, the church split into Protestant and Catholic Church. In 1900,